Hi guys, I'm Zim and Toskin, and welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. In the last episode, we went looking around the uh, school, and we found a lot of stuff. A lot of weird things, and uh, like Kyoko's daddy. He's in a box, he's dead. Um, uh, evidence that the people in the school have been in the school, and we found a morgue which has the bodies saved in them, and just odd things. And we're fixing to go in here to get some, some, some information from Monokuma, and yeah. So let's get into it. Let's go right to it. All right, Monokuma. What you got? It's just me this time. Is he gonna jump out from behind the thing like always? Yep. All right, Monokuma. What you got to say, Bia? I am Monokuma! Hello, welcome, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? Everybody, everyone just keeps dropping the envelope, I guess? This must be the envelope. And just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, just get on with it. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope. I bet there's a picture of all of us in there. And opened it. What I found was a single photograph. <gasps> yep, I knew it! I... I god dang knew it. And yeah. Uh 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 uh. Where wait? Where am I at? I'm not in this picture, am I? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There's fifteen students here. Someone's face is covered up by someone's elbow. And uh. <clears throat> Yeah. But wait, there's the the girl that's we're trying to solve the murder of too. She's there. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. Wait. No, there's Donut Girl over there. I was gonna say she's not there either. A bunch of faces I recognize extremely well. It was everyone who'd come to Hoax Peak at the same time as me. Wait, but there's someone behind Siyaka. The only one I don't recognize. Hey, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Biyaki and I were in the headmaster's room, we looked at that file. Yeah, that's her. The ultimate despair. The, the first one. This girl is... What? Why? Why is Makuro here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone here pose like this weird is enough by itself. We're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. Why do you say we? And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. I'm the only one not here. Maybe I took the picture. The picture is all 15 other students, but not me. But I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember even taking ever taking a picture like this. I went to Junior High Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived at Host Peak Academy, so I think. So, uh, natural for me to not be in this picture, but, but what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in this picture. I thought everyone was like me and we didn't know each other until we got here. But if this picture is real, then could that mean everyone else and just me, everyone here except me <laughs> is... How long do you keep rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you gonna do? You're kinda getting in the way standing there, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, get out! But, but, I told you I'm not fielding any questions. What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. <laughs> that means he's done talking. Damn it. Root photo has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. I need to look at that picture again. Something's weird about it. So in the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. And with that, the confusion in the hand, I left the gym dejected. There's something bugging me. 
How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. It was what Monokuma... Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? See, the thing that bugs me about this is that, uh... Junko's face is covered up for some reason. And this game is pretty good about not doing things by accident. And also her... I mean, not that I know or anything, but her boobs look a lot bigger than they did before. The boobs look bigger, because I, I don't remember like having that bra sticking out at all. Not even a little bit. No, no, I can't, I can't Google, I can't cheat, I can't cheat. I wanted to look up a picture of her to see. But that means she has, she has some, some hoss hogs now in the picture, and I don't think she had them before. I don't, I don't remember her having them. And the girl that is over here, dead, has small boobs. And I mean, it's, it's, I'm going for boobs. And I, okay, I'll, I think Junko is the mastermind. Okay, I'll just say that. I've been like hinting around it. But this, if I'm right, that means that this other girl was dressed up as Junko. She was killed. That's why she has multiple wounds all over her body and the body was kept frozen in the bio lab and then used as the body that we found and exploded and that's and wait or is it backwards because the paper said that she was like 31 22 32 looks like she had wait hmm i'm still convinced that junko is the mastermind like a hundred, almost a hundred percent. But okay, that has, that has to be it. That body has to be that girl's, and she's been dead. She was killed at the beginning. That's why she has. I mean, I knew, I already knew. That's why the stab wounds had to be there. So I was a little confused about. It. I mean, all the stab wounds, but they were like freaking holes. And maybe okay, and then that's that. Mm, but why would she do that, though? That's actually making a sense. Why would that happen? She attacked the bear, got stabbed. Anyway, okay, let's continue. Let's continue all the story. Sorry, I was just getting all in my head about stuff. <sighs> How could anyone fake that? Which would mean everyone but me. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear all this up. <gasps> Five foot seven inches, 97 pounds. Five foot seven, 97 pounds. Five foot seven, 97 pounds. Five foot seven, 97 pounds. Aha! And her chest is 31 inches. Yeah! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Freaking best god dang detective my ass, Kyoko. So, so, so. Junko here, the one that died, is the girl that was already dead. Or, well, that we, the, the body we found that was killed at the beginning. Okay! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! I figured out stuff. I hope I'm right. I hope I'm not completely wrong. My brain will explode if that's not right. Alright, let's go to the archive and talk to Bayou Kyu Kyu Ah Yah Yah. See what he has to say about life. Can I read this again? Maybe the last part of Maku was set up too. Maybe he wants us to find it and act all upset and crazy. I'm sure you know watching the broadcast will be caught up in the drama. Yeah, because that said something about the, the school being old or whatever. Or, uh, I forget exactly what it said, actually. Anyway, it was a, it was a hint. Oh, Byakuya. Dot, dot, dot. Listen, do you think we could talk? How they're all pissed at me because I'm not in the picture. Bayakia? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Bayakia, wait! But of course he didn't, he just walked away. What the? Why is he acting like that? He was purposely trying to avoid me. Everyone's trying to avoid me now because I'm not in the picture. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time, and the first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again. She look at some bodies? Ah, oh, Toko. Show sure enough dead! Let's look at it! It's open. Oh, but Toko. No! Look at the body! She's fine. Oh, okay. 
Toka, are you okay? No, no, she's not dead, is she? <laughs> ah, it's cold, it's super cold, it's so cold, I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in a place like this, I'm sure you will. Ah, I was asleep? I must have fainted again. I bet you are standing there, staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Have oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Eight. Straight up horny? Uh, okay, why'd you pass out? <laughs> I don't know, I think I remember it was me waking up just now. What do you do to Miss Morose? What do you do to Miss... What? Oh, that's right, your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bazinga! We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. And don't say it like it's a bad thing, it's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. She hasn't killed anybody yet, which is, which is insane. <laughs> Cause even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes! So it's like double the memory. I oh, know it's more like half. Well, why don't we ask her if she remembers? You can add the true section. Okay, that... But all I want to right now is where my little darling. Tell me now, or I'll slit your throat. I don't know. I'm sure Bayoku is around here somewhere during his own oh, investigation. Yes, yes. By himself? I assume so. Oh, I knew fire. it. I totally knew it. I'm gonna. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> and if I gotta hurry, I can't even imagine how lonely he must be right now. Okay, <laughs> mm Toko shut off her eerie laughter echoing behind her. I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did she faint? There's gotta be some body that caused it. <laughs> the fridge is open. But I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Right. She faints so easily. Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. Listen. Listen about this room. Well, yeah, it it's... Seem... It's a morgue. I know, you're telling me stuff I already know, I so get out of here. You want to be a detective. I suspected as much. Toko must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was there. Yes, yes, yes. You knew she'd fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed she must have sneezed, but since I got inside, the real reason became it clear. <gasps> Jesus Christ, why are you even telling me about all this? Shut up. I got some dingle anyway. there. Anyway, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, I'm good idea. Out. Give me a hand with this. No, we gotta see who it freaking is. But suddenly she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. How come? Because. M yeah, exactly. Mukuro's corpse. Body is inside the I fridge, see. just like every single time the master probably brought it here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. So... Maybe right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. That's right, Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I gotta find a clue this time. I'm gonna grab the mastermind by the tail. So what should I so do? Then. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Uh, uh. You finished? Should ask you about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I want to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about the announcement Makoto made, made, made earlier. You mean the one about the hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Oh, why because not? The only reason he gives us a hint at this point would be confused us to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? The mastermind forged that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. Just let me see the body! I already asked her about the freaking group photo. Shut up! Blah! Because. Okay. Let me see that body. Fridge must turn dead bodies. I can't do it. I can't look inside. Ugh. Uh, what am I supposed to do? They just leave? What do you want me to do? What do you What do you want me to do, game? Oh, okay. Uh, same when I found the garden tool shed. I remember that tarp. Yeah, bio lab. Dun dun dun. Tarp, use camouflage, remember the garden. At some point, someone got a grab from the bio lab and took it over here. Update. Tarp updated. Sweet. 
Okay, can we can we can we move on with this? Oh my god, are you serious? You just keep asking about the goddamn group photo? Uh. Do I leave now? No? What? This is the, the order of things here. Storm dead bodies. Can't look inside. Left, refrigerator, a bunch of blue, on the right, and not. Would appear. Oh, she said something. Sorry. Someone's in there. The blue lights comes on. Looking around, the number of lights are on, including the Kuros. There's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights? Okay, well, we figured that out earlier ourselves, too, but okay, cool. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Anyone can do a good report if they go slow in that spirit. I'll make my report brief. You find anything? I pay careful attention to the wounds and traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow of the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm coolly confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? So then what was the fatal injury? The explosion of the victim's identity is unknown. There were, however, dead bodies that de they were, however, dead before the blast. The victim has been stabbed a single time with a knife and struck the head, and the body was covered in older wounds. The other wounds, the files say, were old. Is that right? What does... Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because... Oh, wait, I'm on auto. I don't get off auto. All the Monokuma file says that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, immense considering the impression they gave. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However, that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds, it makes sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? Of course they are! We already figured this out. All right, anyway. Keep reading this, okay. Shh, calm down, calm down. <sighs> the wound is a few days old. There's no way it could have anything to do so with then. it. What, what if Makura herself wasn't killed in the last few days? At the very least. Certainly you can allow as many possibilities, can't you? One of many. Right. Exactly as it has supernatural powers, there's no way to predict the answer f from the beginning. Imagine as many possible scenarios as they can. Oh, I don't care. Tell me all about detective. I know all about being a detective, girl. I'm the best. Investigate, they <laughs> test possibilities. Doesn't make you good at detective work beyond these and some particular mystery. You should keep in mind for the future. Has been added to the truth section of your handbook. Hey. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Well, it's one thing. Earlier I was looking at Makura's profile, this is her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7, 97, 31, 22, 32. You remembered all of that? They're indeed consistent with the corpse. So indeed. then, don't forget about Fender tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. A victim in this case, without a doubt, Makuro Ikusaba. That is definitely the body. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. so then. It looks like we have no further business with Makuro's body. Let's get going. It's actually kind of chilly in here. Oh, my nipples. Oh, wait. We're not going to put the body back? I think it's kind of sad leaning out here like Why? this. Sad. Did you forget? She was our enemy once. Part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's still a hey. victim. Have you heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. Whew. You really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. For someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? naive? So then. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations. Ah, hold on. So I have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. If I don't do it now. Hey, girl. Why don't I just keep going? Why do I have to click on her again? Hey, Kyoko. I didn't have one last thing. Uh, no, I shouldn't, but I feel like I have what? to ask. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got what? here? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers in the second floor of the Indeed. dorms? I do, yes. But to get into those lockers, you need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency I handbook. See. And when you found them, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get in the locker, right? Can't imagine those lockers belonging to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. 
what I'm saying is there's no way it could have had any access to those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there's something written inside. That was about the headmaster, about your father. That, if that's true... Did that mean that video is real too? Video? Makoto. Oh yeah, when, her video from the beginning. Ever since the beginning, I kind of thought there was like a huge tragedy in the tragedy in the world because, like, why would there be all that like torn up, like the couch and everything, and the rooms torn up, and like my family video, if you remember way back in the beginning. I think I said that. I was like, maybe the world's blown up, but I was like, ah, I said it jokingly, and now I'm kind of like, man, maybe the world isn't really blown up. Everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you I... talking about? I need to investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you said with my own two eyes. Well, let me give you the headmaster's handbook, that way you can- Nope, Tom! So... That won't be necessary. I'm right about this. I should... Oh yeah, it's hers anyway, right? After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD, and it says Class 78 Urgent Interviews. So... Found it in the hidden room after anyway. you left. I don't need time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. Yeah, it does. You got a DVD! Oh yeah! Let's go watch it. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? All you do is ramble, but okay. So it turns out the arrangements that I made didn't stick. That means I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. I'm talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. And all because of the mastermind. However, There's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I, I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burn with the fire of determination! The determination to defeat the mastermind. <laughs> Strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. Uh, couldn't care less if my father had found yeah. happiness. So why is it? Why does it bother me so much now that he's suffered? It's ridiculous. There's no understanding in a guess. She let a small laugh as she said it. Her smile was filled with sorrow. <sighs> so that's it for my rambling. Thank God. I thought she was going to go on forever. There's still so much to do before I consider my task complete. Yeah, you're hey. right. But keep this in mind, there's on, there's is ever only one absolute truth. Whatever the truth serves justice and suffering, whatever the greatest truth or the worst. Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because because all I can do is keep moving forward. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I will move forward, anime. Sorry, that's strange. So then. Uh, anyway, I need to get going. See you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Koki was gone. I better get going myself. Got a DVD. I should have the AV room and check it out. No matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be just awful. Kind of excited to see what it says. I'm ready to figure all this out. Play that mother trucker. I should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well, then I better take a look. It said it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared at the black screen of the monitor. It must have been only a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden, an image appeared. Siaka? It took me by a total surprise. I hadn't seen Siaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. It's the voice I of a middle-aged man. But I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. Casting couch. Oh yeah. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. Sound like he was trying to make a joke, but Siaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Now then, let me get straight to the point. <laughs> yes, casting catch man, get straight to the there point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Uh, um... You want me to accept that? Siaku is obviously at a total loss. 
made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in the school? Except... What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. My power, I'm very breathy. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There's a lot I hadn't understood up till now, but this, only this. I simply co couldn't comprehend what I heard. Hmm. So why would she agree to spend the rest of her life? Stuff has to be pretty bad and they need hope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I know how much Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape to pursue her dreams with her friends again. They don't exist anymore. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Is it me? Show is! Huh? What I saw was me. Possibly, undeniably, me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I won't cast I should couch. let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's that's only a little creepy, Makoto. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other, and he and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation, but I, the I in there here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him now, like this. Shall we get straight to the point? The reason why I also think the outside world is in really bad shape is because we have an air purifier, supposedly, in the uh, in the school. Why do we need an air purifier? It's a freaking crazy looking space age one, if that's what it really is. Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. Yes. This can't be real. I said I'm yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. All right. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Yakuya. Toko. Hina. Everyone. They all said they agreed to live in the school forever. And then... Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly that I doubt she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, her father, and when he asked her the question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted life within the school. As Kyoko's interview is wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which of course meant the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie! Looks like it broke out of service! What, it just happened to break just now? Too bad. Now then, when, <laughs> now then, when does it matter? Failure can strike anytime, anywhere, anytime. Oh, Monokuma. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? Failure, my ass. You cut the power on purpose. Whatever. Even if you watch the whole thing, it'd just be more the same. You'd ask them the question, and they'd all say yes. Except, the whole Junko thing would have been a little different. Couldn't help myself. I let out a huge, exasperated sigh. But as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and then, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. Seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point, my memory was gone. In that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school, and I don't couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what could make you forget all hey. that? Hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems too convenient. Convenient outcome. Something that seemed too 
obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the other? Yeah, of course we let we lost our freaking memories. That's why no one doesn't know. That's why we're even doing all this. Or maybe we gave up our memories. Uh, I don't know. We wish we wouldn't be killing each other after that. Hmm. All right, what now? Is it time for the class trial? For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black, there is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get in here and do the end. I guess I'm the first Makoto. one this time. You're early, Makoto. Listen. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least, but where's everyone else? Why aren't they here? However, Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said... Yakuya, you still piss. They arrived one after another, but they were all in the same state of shock. Hina? Hero? Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence. It was the deafening silence of fear and suspicion. It was like the first class trial. Oh, hey. You called for me and so I appear. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Oh, I'm on fire. Ah, strong, silent master. So wonderful, so cool, so hot. My loins are ablaze. Yes. Now listen, everything will be fine if you just leave it to my me. Beautiful With my scissors, my sharp scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge and shiv the master of evil. But I thought you couldn't kill him with but adorable little boys. <laughs> but if that's if but it's what Master wants. It could be a boy or a girl or anything in between. I can handle it. <laughs> Where am I? <sighs> no human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Is everyone here? Oh, and wearing our gloomy gus faces, well, I see. Man. Then let's begin! Chills, chills, kills! This final class trial is gonna be slow. Gathered in pitch black despair, climb maximum sorrow. That's fine. You're right. This is the final trial, and this time it'll be fair. What do you mean this time? Stop with all the slander. I'm a bear in good standing, you know. Unbelievable. If that was Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest, I'd take the tiara every year. I'm gonna win this game super fair and square. Today I'm feeling white. And oh, <laughs> today's feeling white, huh? That's very racist of you. And I'll make sure everyone at home knows that despair is mightier than the hope. Stop talking. Enough of your tedious drivel. Begin the trial already. <laughs> sure, sure. Let's begin the trial already. I'll be waiting for you down below. Hey guys. So don't try and run away. <laughs> bruh, bruh. Laughing as loud as ever, Monokuma disappeared. <laughs> Whatever. In the name of my family. It'll be over in no time. With an inexplicable confidence, Bayakuya was the first into the elevator. One by one, the others followed. I told you it would seem like I'm the obvious choice to be the mastermind. <laughs> it's like I just got all this shit figured out. Quick! Nobody made eye contact. Nobody said a word. They just disappeared into the elevator. Hey. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. However, you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think however. so. Well, you can tell us all about it soon, at the class trial. You're right, I'm ready. So... Ready to win, right? Of course. 
I'm glad to hear you say that. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. All right, started making way toward the opening, step by step, toward the gaping mall. I'd resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated to myself that there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calmed by my trembling body, and finally on steady legs, we descended. I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. That warning began to descend. Deeper and deeper, 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 and deeper still. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper it fell. Close my eyes and sight fell away. All sound too disappeared. Alone in the universe, I waited for the doors to open for the last time. What could have been seconds or centuries later, I felt the gentle vibration of the elevator come to an end. I slowly opened my eyes. This, this is the final trial site? What do you think? It's just the perfect background for deciding a person's fate. Yahoo! It's a long awaited last stage. The always exciting final boss battle. <laughs> And I'm going to sit in on this one. I'll just sit right here in the vacant 16th seat. Chills! 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 Well then, let's begin! Oh uh, yeah, we better save it because we got to prepare our buttholes for this trial. Alright. Shoo. 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 A shoe. Alright. I think I'm all caught up on my shave. So, make sure I get all my skills set. I think I only have like a handful of skills. I only have many. Half of my SP that I can use. Finish preparations. Class trial, all rise. Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up. If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super hard pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will! And that's final? Wow. No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their word! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. You're all the mastermind, aren't you? God dang it. You're all out to get me. I'm right, aren't I? I knew it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do I have to <laughs> already? Make your arguments. All right. Group photo places to check. E Headmaster's E handbook. What, what places to check have to do anything? You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right. Hey, you stole my line. You're all out to get me. Oh, I'm really? Sure of it. Everyone's out to get each other? I have evidence of my own. Okay. What a coincidence. I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. Wh what? Wait, hold on. This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? No, that's wrong. It's not just you three. I have evidence too. What? You too? The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Why would they think that they're the only ones that have that? Well, well, yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. Oh, really? Ah. With the picture you have, I'm in it. Oh. But that can't be right. Because in my picture... Oh! See, I'm the only one not in it. Okay. Man, look at Sakura go. She's freaking out. My guy's like, uh, uh, uh. And let's look around. Let's look around. There she is. Her head's turned around. Of course it is. There's not a clear picture of her, but that booty, though. Look at. Ooh, the. <laughs> very, very sexy. All right. 
Here's much in which case. Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Uh, okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty <laughs> important evidence. Again, it's covered. All right. This one too, just like a thought. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, interesting, interesting. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care. You guys are all in on this together. That's why I'm the only one missing. But you're in my picture. You're the ones trying to trick me. So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? What if I need to reveal Monokuma's trap? Each photo has a certain something in common. There's a connection. What person is it shown in the group's photos? And that person is... The one who got the photos. I got it! I got it! In each case, the only one not in the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. Uh huh. And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my yeah. photo as well. Let's see it. Uh, 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 in other words, uh, Monokuma gave each her face of us is still a covered. I saw photo it. in which that person wasn't included. And when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? But you know, there might be more to this than just Monokuma trying to confuse us. There's something else that bothers me about everyone's picture. What is it? What's Listen, digging at me? Can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. There's something unusual about these group photos. What is it? I need to compare you to them one more time. Well, I've already did that. Look at that, where did that fish come from? My curious picture, face is covered. Hey girl, how you doing? Got your gloves on still. He is picture. Oh wait, where's the other girl at? She's only in one of them, right? No, there she is again, okay. Hero's picture. And mine. What one did Kyoko get? There's something strange about all of them. Something I can't quite pin down. Something. Group photos with updates who sent you your handbook. Did you forget about the photo already? Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo? I'm still pissed about that. And on top of that, they went to all that trouble to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? <laughs> no, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. Mm -hmm. yeah, what are you talking about? There's no way. Yeah. I don't remember ever taking a picture like that, so it's got to be a fake. I'm sure of it. But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong. I don't remember taking this picture either. But is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? The reason I don't remember this picture being the picture isn't necessarily because it's fake. There might be some other reason, some terrible reason, an unbelievable but entirely horrifying reason. Hangman's gambit. Of course. Let's uh, let's try to figure out what the heck it wants us to see. Amnesia. Wait, what, what comes next? E or I? Okay. <laughs> Got a spell. Shut up. M E E A A A A A A I before E except after C. Now I understand. <laughs> Let's say that somehow we'd all lost our memories. That could explain it, couldn't it? Oh, I get it. 
so we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo. Makes sense. As if. You expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult-type story? Yeah! We all lost our memories? That's just... crazy! So unnatural they wouldn't believe it, but no matter how much they refuse, that's the absolute truth. They have no choice. We can't move forward until they accept it, and there's no other way... the pictures... But we found your notebook and some other stuff. Make your argument! Uh, God dang, group photo, head message handbook. Profile, interview DVD. Yeah, interview DVD it should work. You're saying we all got spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, that's wrong! No, that's wrong! Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not gonna show us something indecent, are you? Good lord, just... <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us. Including you. You lied! I never did any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. Dot, dot, dot. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! <laughs> living, breathing? To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me, I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Oh. Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever. Or even talking to the headmaster about it. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane. How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true. What? <laughs> what? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed, we only have one path in front of us. Then we really? Yep, you all totally lost your memory at the same time. This is all making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. <sighs> How could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you. The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. 
A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. You mean motive. the motive you came up with to try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else? So until we do that, we either, either way, we'll have to explain every last remaining mystery. So, the one who killed Mukuro, the true mastermind, that's what we need to expose. <laughs> Control room, profile, headmaster's e handbook. Okay. So who did it? Who killed her? Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. Uh -huh. But when you think about it, is the mastermind really here in the school? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, of they course. They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Uh huh. Um. What does make me so sure? <laughs> the control room. Exactly. You're just making stuff up. There's no way the mastermind is here. The mastermind is probably a million miles away. I need to shoot it. No, that's wrong. There's no question that the mastermind is somewhere within the school. Uh -huh. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, I found a. Oops, I mean the skip, mastermind sorry. must have been using that to control him all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, there also can be no doubt that the mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. I'm sure I told you this already, but this killing game began with 16 participants. Yeah, I keep saying that. So if the mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed. That's what I said. Oh, I get it. The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? Aw, nuts! You got me! <laughs> Wait, what are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died when she got hit in the back of the head. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? Well, of course I agree. Stab wounds. I mean, the other wounds. I sorry. got it! Stab wounds from all the spikes. All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? It's it made old. it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago, so they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days? If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, because... Because she had all those wounds before she ever came here, huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So well, that means... Case file says she wasn't hurt at all. You know, you're wrong. <laughs> she denied me. <laughs> Before I could even say anything. She likes it rough. 
<laughs> Come on. I mean, you think I'm... I'm not weird, okay? At least <laughs> listen to what I have to say before you deny me! So sure gonna deny you. Why bother singing in the first place? Go do the dance game with her? Nope. Make your arguments. Okay. Her profile. Yep. That's what we're gonna use. Mukuro was the ultimate soldier. She must have been in a, a hundred different battles. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all those wounds in battle. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Psh, break. No, Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. To uh, be denied so completely... Actually, it's kind of refreshing. Oh, maybe it's because of all of Master's training! <laughs> anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school, in which case, they could be the very thing that killed her. As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. Nice! Uh, I think the injury's been added to the truth. Look at them. Mm -hmm. But if that's what killed her, then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, Certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? The only person who attacked me, I can't think of anyone else, was uh, the mastermind. I got it! The one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me. Mm -hmm. But I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting a little impatient sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusama. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? No, there's no way Mukuro is the one that attacked me. I didn't even see your face. Well, I got the profile, so it's okay. Go ahead, very obvious finger tattoo comparing to the mask. Should be obvious. You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mook. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir. In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. 
Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah! We were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you, but what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her. Uh-oh, no snappy comeback. Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Before anyone can say anything... Kyoko was removing her gloves. Your hands! Without thinking, I let out a gasp. She got burnt hands! It was more than just a little burnt Awful, skin. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. Kyoko seemed to savor the words she said them. She didn't put her gloves back on. My scars should suffice as proof. Yep, those Makoto, are some clean hands to me. Did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true <laughs> mastermind. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> this is just awful. On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively <laughs> grotesque scars of yours. Uh, sorry, oh, man. did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure, as long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet. Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown. That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, with a doubt. She died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died, who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? Yep. She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? If she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your brain. Then Got him. she was being stored somewhere? But to hide a body here, to just store it somewhere? There's only one place. It would have been in the bio lab. I got it! I got it! Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. Bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a morgue, so it's the perfect place to hide a body and it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. Why is the bio lab? It was the tarp. Where is it? Where's my tarp at? There it is right there. <laughs> One of the first things. What makes me so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is the tarp that we found in the garden. When I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the Gigantic tarp. Gigantic bio lab that we oh, never saw before. It says bio lab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? Oh, it's something tiny? Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. This proves that the tarp originally came from the bio lab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. 
So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the coat on it afterwards. Wow, you made everything sound so amazingly c consistent. <laughs> That's just a wild guess. Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved. There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Oh yeah. Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the bio lab contained an inconsistency. One so major it can't be overlooked. And it consists in the bio lab. What are you talking about? I can't hear you. La, la, oh, God. La, la. I have to do this stupid Such a dance child. game. Oh, well. Just ignore him. I need to pull myself together and think. The inconsistency in the bio lab. What are you hey, talking by about? the way, Makoto, what about that one thing? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. What? He's just trying to mess with me now. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Yeah, I need to calm down. I can't let him get to me. He just said He's just saying that because he knows we're getting close to the truth of the bio lab. So if I want to shut him up, I need to expose the inconsistency and slam him with it. The inconsistency has to be that one area of the numbers just don't match up. The moment of truth. All right, let's play the dance game. There we go. My bad. I wasn't I paying attention. I didn't realize I had to pick one. <laughs> the inconsistency Kyoko's talking about is the lights. lights. Get me. Ah! What? What are you talking about? Oh, uh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the bio lab also acts as a morgue, and as part of that. A giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn off. Mm -hmm. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in. Uh huh. And there were only nine. Why does that matter? You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. <laughs> now why does this make any sense? Number of lights should be. I got it. Ten of the lights should have been. Suspicious. Why? That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. Yeah, look at all those wounds on her body. It's crazy. Somebody died twice, huh? Hmm. So ten people in all? That's right. Any other number should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. You're saying a dead body just up and disappeared? I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body, since they actually killed her. And yet, 
her body was left alone. Then whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. And if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's executions, there have apparently been ten deaths. But there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number Wait, of murders? Come on. Put it together, girl. You can do it. There's less bodies than murders. There's plenty of murder victims. Why is that? Well, that take more sense. The same person was killed twice. Our only nine murders took place. I got it. What about if... The same person was killed twice. Huh? Killed twice? Officially, ten murders have been committed so far, but one of the victims may have been murdered, and then murdered again. Murdered and murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Technically, you're right, I guess. But still, something like that could easily have happened. No. It is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, 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 that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious! Because Kyoko's totally delusional! Oh, no, not the dance scheme again. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna die. Uh, Monokuma Fall? Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed as? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko and Enoshima? Leon Chihiro, Manda, Kiyotaki Fumi, Celestia Lu, or maybe. No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered. No, that's, that's wrong. wrong. Bitch! Junko. Yeah! Wasn't her Mukuro. fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? Stab, 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 stab. Well, remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number Taz of wounds too. across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered, then the similarities match? Yes, and those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this straight. Go ahead, get it straight. Step, 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 step. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. Then it's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine. Mm -hmm. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive. She took Yunko's body and made it look like she was the one who died. So Mukuro is still alive. She's gotta 
to be! Total silence? Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? Mukuro Love. Oh, there's still a lot of Mukuro. No one, they're never right on the first one, so. But, can we believe that? There's no way, there's no way Mukuro Ikusabi is still alive. Do you make your argument? Fatal injury, her profile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The body we found in the garden, it wasn't Mukuro. No, that's wrong. No, wrong. Busted break. No, the body we found in the garden mm -hmm. was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, Kyoko? Mm -hmm. She was five foot six inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals her were vitals, 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. But... <laughs> Someone may look like they died, but they're actually still alive. There's only one person it could be. Select someone. Where you at, girl? There you are. Here's my answer. Got it. Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. Why are you throwing shade at me, man? But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would have had to have been some kind of charade. No, she's dead. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? They mention it. Yeah, they the movies and stuff, but she's really dead. Let's say she was gone. Let's check out. absolutely. I she was sure. dead. There's no question. Junko was dead. But it wasn't so, Junko. The idea that she's still alive. No, stop throwing shade on me. Wrong. No, you're not and wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement. <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad. I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad. Too bad! This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? Of course not, because I know I'm freaking right. No! <laughs> of course not! There's no way I'd give up that easy! That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived? How could Junko have survived? She was dead. If she were alive somehow, it could be that Junko's not the one that died. Someone else entirely. Maybe use some sort of trick. No. Hangman's Gambit. What will this word be here? What? Re. 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 I don't know. E. Replace. Okay. Where's my E. Wait, replace. Duh. Okay, I was like, what? <laughs> replaced. Now I understand. I got it. Complete. That's it. What if she switched places with someone else? Switched places? That's right. Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death. 
Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Before the whole thing even started. Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind <laughs> of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. Well, her nails. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. Why do you guys... You guys are really going out of your way to try to prove me wrong. And I already know I'm right. They forgot to explain how they could be switched. They switched every day. They switched at the beginning. I got it. The two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes. From the moment we first met. If that's when they switched, then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? Well, yeah, duh. I mean, that's stupid to even think they After would do all, that. The one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So you're saying the Junko we first met was actually Mukuro all along? Yes. Then we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait! But Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion. Yeah, that's what's kind of covered up. the tattoo after the body was extinguished. That's what I was like, tattoos don't do like that. Plus, there mm -hmm. were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's right. body. That's right. That's right. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, gotcha. so this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? Yeah. If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. Mm -hmm. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. Mm -hmm. So this Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. <laughs> What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back? I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity. When did I do that? He still refused to admit it, but he can try to see all, all he wants. It doesn't matter. Because I've already figured it out. You're already dead. He tried to hide Junko's identity not just once, but twice. And the first time was during our latest investigation was the tape. What? Make sure. Interview DVD, right? I got it! Yeah! We cut it off, huh? I was huh? in the AV room, watching the mm -hmm, DVD mm -hmm. of our interviews with the headmaster. Mm-hmm. DVD turned itself off, and then what the heck just happened? Oh, oopsie! Having to break just now. Failure is, right? Yeah, you whatever. made sure I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that 
is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah. If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. The bad whole power outage thing was just a fluke. No, it wasn't a fluke. The mastermind definitely orchestrated that power outage. And that's not the only time they tried to hide Junko's identity. The mastermind tried to cover up one other piece of evidence. I gotta reveal that. Moment of truth. God dang it. I'm not ready for this game. It's kind of hard. Oh, good. Final strike. Uh, That's impossible! Interview DVD. Interview, interview DVD. Uh, oh, no, no, no. What is it? What is it? Oh, God dang it. Oh, the group photo. Crap. I saw it at the end. Ass. Ass and titties. Crap. Yeah, give another shot. I refuse to give up yet. It was the freaking photo. I was in such a hurry and freaking out that. Uh, okay. That's uh, okay. I can't give up now. Let's play this game, biatch. What a truth. That's impossible! Group photo, biatch! This should prove it. Yeah! Yeah! Now I still just gotta figure out what happened in the world. The video <sighs> wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. That's right, you did. Uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we'd gotten. In all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. Well, what's so unusual about them? One of these pictures is that that old girl's face is never shown. The usual circumstance is Junko's face. I got it! Junko's face. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. Yup. It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko, which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! Xanadu! Everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. Dun, dun, and dun. she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No, no, wait, now hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything. Right now! Closing. Okay. So I gotta do this thing again. Okay. Oh, hey, girl. Mm. The killer right. is you! The killer is you! Bum, 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 bum. We met bum, the bum. ultimate fashionista, Dang, Junko girl. Inoshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. Mm -hmm. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusaba. <gasps> but it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in a bio until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, 
using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, who proved to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukura was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. Yeah, put the thing on, get the mask out, we'll stab you. Oh, just kidding, caught you. Run away. After Ooh, making God. sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one and the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Dun dun dun! Beep! Explosion! Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder, and the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. Ooh! You! The real Junko in Oshima! Complete! That's the whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? Hmm? What? Are you broken again? You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on! It's time you finally revealed yourself! It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you plan to keep hiding? Give it up, uh, Junko. Right. The game's over. But why would Junko do it? Jealousy, over? maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Did you really think the story would end once we reached the climax of the case? Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Jesus! Oh, it's getting smoky in here. Junko Inoshima, ultimate despair. Oh, she doesn't have a little freckles on her face. Did she just appear out of nowhere? We have been waiting. What? Waiting so very long for peasants like you to appear. What? If you swear your fealty to us, we will reward you with half of the entire world. We've even drawn up the deed already. We will grant you honor, status, in some of our home cooking. Have you she, made your choice? She's insane. Will you serve under us? Okay. <laughs> Can I pick? <laughs> Can I just say sure? Uh, did you think I was being serious? Sorry. I was just messing with you. It's been so long since I've had an audience. Even I'm not sure what kind of role I'm supposed to play. You sound so boring. This is the mastermind? She's the real Junko Inoshima? Anyway, looks like I've finally been set free. Mm. Having to play Monokuma all the time, day after day. It was like I was stuck in purgatory or like a slow suicide. I get bored so easy, you know? Your face! Huh? What about my face? What's wrong with my beautiful face? People have told me I'm cuter than a hundred chihuahuas combined. <laughs> I feel like this isn't the first time I've seen you. Of course not, she's in magazines, right? No, I do remember seeing it. I'm sure I've seen her too somewhere. It was definitely before I got to the school. And then before I even get to school, right? I don't know. I got it! That's right! It was before I ever came to this school. Yeah. I remember seeing a magazine cover. And you were on it! Mm -hmm. Wow, you have a pretty good memory. Wow. I guess that's why you've made it this far, huh? So I, guess I was so. right. 
than what you told me in the main hall when this all began. See, there are tons of magazine covers, but it doesn't feel quite match up to reality. Ha ha! It gave me a clue right at the start! Huh? Oh, are you talking about cover photos and junk? Well, of course, those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? You know, well edited to hell and back, like computers and junk. You know, so they aren't real. Sometimes a little lie is necessary to keep things moving along. Wouldn't you agree? That explains why she didn't quite seem the same. Because she was a different person all along. I'm me. And Mukuro is Mukuro. She tried her best. But there's just no way she could have passed as the ultimate fashionista. Okay. Two people can never become one as long as the walls of mind and body exist. Not even if they're twins. Twins? I know. It's such a cliche, right? I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. Okay. So, so she's basically, Mukuro and I had your stereotypical twin relationship. The older sister, tough and proud. That was Mukuro. The younger sister, smart and cute. That was... <laughs> Me! Junko fucking Anishima! And together, we were the Despair Sisters! A.K.A. the Ultimate Despair! Whoa! Jesus Christ. She's a totally different person now! <laughs> like I said, I get bored easy as hell! I even get fucking bored with myself! Right. But if, if you're twins... Why do you have d different last names? Oh, that again? You have any idea how many times people ask me that shit? Maybe it's new to your dumb ass, but it bores me to tears. Answering the same questions over and over? Just make up whatever answer you want. I don't give a shit. The truth's fucking lame anyway. But okay. if she was your twin, that means you killed your own sister? And for reasons deeper and darker than the ocean. Ha! <laughs> As if! Well, I suppose I'd better explain. <laughs> for my Jesus Christ! Work, someone had to be able to control the killing game from behind the scenes. <laughs> she changed her The so-called mastermind had to operate <laughs> Monokuma, keep an eye on everyone, things like that. But right. after looking at the situation, I determined it would be impossible for Mukuro to perform such duties. Because naturally, she turned out to be the letdown of the family. Leaving me behind to run off and join some band of mercenaries. Such a disappointment. So, I decided to play the role of director and have her join the rest of you in your school life. I could have let her work alongside me, but she would have been useless to me that way. Besides, 15 students seemed like a solid number to start with. Of course, the fact that she was the ultimate soldier posed something of a problem. She had what I call the three atrocities. Atrociously rank, atrociously filthy, atrociously repulsive. Donuts, it was atrociously though. clear just how out of touch she was with the rest of society. Meanwhile, my ultimate fashionista status has an undeniable appeal that I didn't want to go to waste. And that's why you switched identities? Sadly, her inability to match my personality was even greater than I'd calculated. It was a lost cause. She was nothing more than a bit player, an extra unworthy of lines. Being the utter disappointment that she was, anyone would have expected her to get killed off right away. Which is precisely why I killed her to meet everyone's expectations. That can't be your only reason, can it? Well, no, of course not. I also did it to avoid becoming bored. I've never been a stickler for following oh, the plan Christ. to the letter, you know? If I planned everything out and knew just what was gonna happen, that'd be so boring. So I changed things just a bit and decided to use Mukuro to make a little point. In other words, Mukuro's death was a one-sided, premeditated act of betrayal, just as I suspected. When Mukuro was killed, she must have been as surprised as anybody else. Yeah, she's like, the hell? Wh huh? This wasn't supposed to... Why, me? <laughs> so 
you figured it out? Well, you're right. There's no way Mukuro could have pulled off such a convincing performance, but she did teach you all a very valuable lesson, don't you think? How can you talk like that? You sacrificed your own sister. How does that not even bother you? What? I sacrificed her? That's what's got you so hot under the collar? Jeez, misunderstanding sure are scary. We were the ultimate despair, you know? So we never had any kind of hope or expectations. Nope, I felt despair as long as I can remember. Like I never should have been born at all. When I was born, I cried tears of total despair. So that's why for us, it's not a big deal whether we die or kill. We're just those kinds of people. We can do anything. We've always been filled with despair. So when we do something, we go all the way and live without regret. So you just murdered your own sister and didn't think anything of it? That's not true at all. We were twins. How could I not be sad? That's why it gets me so... Is that mushrooms now? ...excited. Huh? Killing my precious sister with my own two hands. That act is filled with so much despair. You can't help but put a super in front of it. It's like... Super, 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 super despair. No, more than that. Super, 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 super despair. It just feels so good. What the hell is wrong with you? And my sister too. In that moment of death, I think she must have felt that despair. After all, to be murdered by your own sister, and only as an example to someone else. She must have died feeling such excruciating hopelessness. I'm so jealous of her. Super jealous. I knew you couldn't be just some ordinary person. You're some kind of abnormality. Turning your own despair into some kind of fetish. Abnormality doesn't even begin to describe it. Like, genocide Jill is crazy for sure, but this is a whole nother level of nuts! You're saying I don't compare to some lowly beast that can only kill the weak, right? So, I'm hopelessly attractive, hopelessly brilliant, hopelessly athletic. I'm the hopelessly perfect ultimate human. No, I don't think there's anything perfect about anything you just said. Yeah, Master's way more perfect, because on top of everything else, He's got that noble blood. Hmm. Don't you mean had that noble blood? What did you just say? What do you mean by that? <laughs> you still haven't figured that part out yet? Man, you guys are so slow. You haven't even solved all the mysteries, and yet here you are, yap, yap, yapping away. Are you talking about our memories? You've already solved this mystery, right? I'm the killer! So how about the next one? Maybe you should solve the riddle of your missing memories. Then you can start gloating. Damn straight! That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to solve all these mysteries. And then we'll have our victory! <laughs> I can't wait! Alright, then let's just get straight to the point. What memories did you steal from us? When the group pictures were taken? And those interviews? It must mean... I got it! It must have something to do with our entrance exams! No mm. oh, fair! At least give us a hint! Your brains are like sponges! All drippy and leaky! I already gave you a hint before! All the memories you lost share something in common with a few other things! Do you recall? Thinking back to what Mon Monokuma told us, the memories that were stolen from us, what would they be related to? Uh... Class trials? We... The way they kill us were all in my memories, right? Founding the motives? I got it! There we go, yeah. You're talking about the motives you provided to try and get us to kill each other, right? So you do remember after all. Well... I would hope you wouldn't forget something so important. It was stupid of me to even ask. I apologize from the bottom of my heart for my bad manners. So then, let me ask you another question. Did you notice that each motive I presented you had a specific theme to it? Uh, 
Theme? Yep, you got it. So that's my question to you all. When Sayaka was murdered, what was the theme of the motive I presented? Theme and motive for the first murder, Monkey was giving us DVDs. If it was my family, Sayaka was her her friends. First murder, the motive would begin were... Love triangles. I got it! The driving force behind the motive you presented us with at that point was human connections. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Remember those DVDs I gave you guys? Each video showed the total destruction of your most important relationships. For example, your family. For example, your friends. I ruined all those relationships and showed you the results. It was to motivate your desire to escape and kickstart your urge to kill. But still, what a cruel thing to do. You're the one that did it! Yes, well, I'm perfectly happy to accept your disapproval. Okay! Time for the next question! Um, so, what was the theme for the second motive? Second motive is we got those weird envelopes. I mentioned those are our past. I got it! It was our past. Yay! Makoto got it right again! That time, the theme was... Embarrassing memories and secrets! Yeah! <laughs> and the whole reason Mondo did what he did was to protect his secret. So, how long do you plan on dragging this out? Relax, relax. Okay, on to the next question. So... Was the motive for the third murder? The third murder was Celeste, European Castle, Handsome Men, Greed. I got it! It was money, wasn't it? Greed. Seek and destroy! Hell yeah, you got it again! Money! Goddamn straight it was money! Celeste killed Hifumi and Taka for a little personal gain. Her greed led to all kinds of death and destruction. What's the point of all this? Why are you making us go through this case by case? <laughs> Don't worry, sweet cheeks. Just one more to go. Now, can you tell me the motive behind crazy ass Sakura's crazy ass death? Motive of her death was. This one gets away her secret. The motive was betrayal secrets? Blackmail. Betrayal. I got it! In her case, it was betrayal. Precisely. You see, once I revealed Sakura's betrayal, that led to everything that came afterwards. Anyway. It looks like you answered all of my questions correctly. How painfully delightful. But what's the point? What meaning is there in asking those questions now? Relationships? Secrets? Money? Betrayal? These are all pretty standard motives, right? The most normal of normal. Totally middle of the road. But of course, those aren't the only motives that exist in this world. In fact, there are as many reasons to kill as there are people on Earth. They compel humans to kill each other, bringing despair to the world. This is what we refer to as the seed of despair. The seed of despair? Just as water, air, and food promote growth in living things, the seed of despair also needs nourishment. And that nourishment is hope. Despair can grow only in the presence of hope. Two sides of the same coin, divided by a razor-thin line. Such is hope and despair. How much longer is this stupid speech of yeah, yours? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, Jesus Christ, shut up. Weren't we discussing our missing memories? Why are you trying to change the subject? If you would listen, you would see I'm not changing the subject. We are discussing your memories. What I'm trying to say is, the seed of despair is closely tied to your own memories. Uh, how so? You see, by taking away your memories, I gave you hope. Of course that hope merely existed to be consumed by despair. How could taking away someone's memories give them hope? And plus, you haven't given us any hope anyway! Is that so? 
All you've been able to think about during your time here is how to escape, right? The mere fact that that's what you want proves I gave you hope. What are you talking about? If none of you wanted to escape this school, the killings never would have taken place. That is why we took your memories, so that you would have the desire to leave. The only reason we want to leave is because you took our memories. <laughs> Correct, Mundo. Which means if we did have our memories, then we wouldn't want to leave. Do I understand that right? What? Why the hell would having our memories make us not want to leave? <laughs> A most troubling thought, isn't it? But it's not enough. I want more distress, more despair. I put so much effort into creating hope in order to feed your despair and make it grow. So, just like Crazy Eddie slashing his prices and passing <laughs> the savings on to you, let me give you a hint. Huh? Really? Then hurry up and tell us. Okie dokie. Like they say, seeing is believing. I'd like for you to see the outside world. The outside world? You mean the world beyond the school walls? Yep. So something really did happen out there. Yep. Now are you interested in what I have to say? You want to see what's out there? <laughs> I want to see too. See your faces sink into despair. <laughs> now then, open sesame! Behold, the world beyond the school walls. This is the outside world you've all been so anxious to claw your way back into. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not what I was exactly expecting. I will have to say that is because it's just a little the whole Monokuma thing is a little weird. I just expect everything will be destroyed. Dangerous. The world has grown so very dangerous. That's what this means. What are you talking about? None of this makes any sense. What? What am I looking at? This is a scene from a movie or something. Right? What you just saw. All of you should recognize it. Should recognize it? What about it should we recognize? This whole thing is insane. That world is locked away within the memories that were taken from you. If you can't remember, please just try. Do your best to try and recall. <laughs> Better kick your brain in the ass! Cause it's up to that gray lump whether you live or die. I don't remember. Ain't a fucking excuse no more. Cause now it's time for the final class trial. Okay. Come on, bitches. Remember or die. What the fuck happened outside? You want us to remember or whatever, but when it comes to that crazy, confusing video you showed us, I don't understand a damn thing. What's the meaning of the footage we saw? Is this another one of your practical jokes? I mean, you're telling us to remember, but what am I supposed to be remembering? Nobody can remember anything. No, that's wrong. Oh yeah. Actually, she might remember. Who might remember? The other Toko. Genocide Jack. What? The two of them share certain kinds of knowledge. But their memories aren't linked, right? I see. If their memories are separate, then even if one personality's forgotten, 
There's a chance the other may still have those memories. What do you say, Toko? Are you telling me to swap places with her? No! Absolutely not! That'd be like forfeiting my entire identity! Toko, you're the only one we can rely on now. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, your friendly neighborhood. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> Ooh, she just gave in like it was nothing. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to have it answered immediately. Do you know anything about this video? Huh? What video? The video that's playing right now. Who the hell are you? Oh, um, I'm the mastermind. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, Nice to meet you, too. That's enough! Just look at the stupid screen! Aye, aye! Roger, you got it, Captain! Well, does it look familiar? I don't have all the details, but... Of course it does! Then you remember all the stuff it's showing? Of course I do! So you didn't lose your memory after all. Then why didn't you say something earlier? I only answer questions when someone bothers to ask me. I'm the quiet type, you know? Oh my god, she's the worst liar in the world. More importantly, if you really do remember, what is it? Huh? What's the matter, Master? Do you really not remember the tragedy? The tragedy? Oh no! You seriously forgot? Maybe I can help you remember with a kiss. Just answer the question. What happened out there? Well, I can't really say if it happened or if it's still happening. But it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Why is that phrase coming up now? Because it's all because of that event. What is? Are you serious? I'm talking about the way the world is now. Is now? The world's been destroyed, get it? Destroyed? Explain yourself. Tell us everything you know! Copy that, darling! Okay, so this big, awful, tragic event, they started just calling it the tragedy, happened about a year ago. It was so big and so bad that even this murderous fiend went pale at the sight of it. I guess you could say what happened was man-made. But it was more on the level of a worldwide natural disaster. Either way, there's no doubt that it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history! And as a result, in basically no time flat! The world turned out the way it did, and that's that. That's all there is to it? Come on! There wasn't a single concrete description in there! Well, it just so happens I don't know any of the specifics! Miss Morose saw it all play out in real time, so why don't you ask her? We already did, and she didn't know anything! That's why we're asking you! Oh, I couldn't live up to Master's expectations! To die! To die! This is the true tragedy! Okay, okay, that's enough of your little lover's quarrel. Whatever happened, it doesn't matter at this exact point in time, right? The end justifies the means. Everything serves the outcome. In other words, the world has ended. That's the important thing. But how can the world just end? It's... It's the world! Calm down. It's okay. There's no need to panic. Every living person will be dead in a hundred years anyway. So the world ending isn't that big a deal. Oh, come on. Now you're just being ridiculous. Well, as long as we're being ridiculous, I have another ridiculous story to tell you. It's the story of the Tagami Corporation, which has given Byakuya's life all its meaning. What? What did you say? I'm glad to see you took the bait. You bit into it like a middle-aged secretary at an all-you-can-eat cake buffet. Oh, hey, man. hey! So, what do you think happened to the Togami family? No I wonder. Correct! Well done, peasant! But I didn't say anything yet. I just got so fucking bored waiting, I couldn't help it! Even if you're wrong, eventually you'll figure it out, right? <laughs> Till then, you're just going in circles. So, no matter what you pick, you get the right answer! Pretty innovative, don't you think? But, do you think it might be a disease? Getting bored so easy, I mean. Do you think I might be... sick? Anyway, like I was saying, Byakuya's entire lineage has been totally annihilated! What? 
What the hell are you talking about? I can confirm that his entire family has died. Even the distant relatives. The Tagami name has perished. Stop with these idiotic jokes! Stop! And said with such authority! A peasant would dare challenge us? The avatar of divine punishment? You must learn your place, peasant! You are no longer the ultimate affluent progeny! They, they couldn't possibly be gone! The Togami family is destined to guide the world! Hell, there is no world anymore, remember? It got fucked a full year ago! But hold on! That doesn't make any sense! Huh? I don't make sense? There's no way that happened a year ago! I mean, we only came to this school a few weeks ago! If some kind of world-ending event happened a year ago, then how do you explain the totally normal world we were living in up till then? <laughs> Have you considered the possibility that you're mistaken about that? Mistaken? Well, if I'm understanding you right, it sounds like you think the tragedy happened a year before you arrived here. Well, well yeah. I mean, like he said, we just got here a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Ooh, I get it! You're saying that what happened two years ago actually happened more recently, right? Huh? Two years ago? Well, I mean, you guys all started attending Hope's Peak Academy two years ago. Wait, what? Two years ago? What is that? <laughs> What the hell is this chick trying to say? I understand why you'd have trouble accepting it, but in the end, you can't deny the truth. And the truth is, everything is cause and effect. Deny that, and you may as well give yourself up to God. So, you must surely understand all the hints I've given you so far, right? What are the memories I took from you? Come now, answer us. Answer with all your heart and soul supposed to answer I I just don't know what's going on anymore still we have to answer somehow if we don't everything ends right here memories that were stolen from us if Junko says it's true it came here two years ago but the rest of us only remember getting here from the last week or so the memories took from us was our life set our life at Hope Peak and the tragedy actually I got it if we accept that what you say is true then we've all lost our memories of the last two years after coming to this school. Nope, nope, no, 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 nope, no. I mean, no matter what anyone says, uh-uh. <laughs> Another correct answer. Well done, peasant. Seriously? This routine again? We've lost two years worth of memories? That's right. You've already spent two full years here at Hope's Peak Academy. And that entire period of time is precisely what you've forgotten. I don't remember the last two years of my life. That... that's not possible! Well, I've got two. I don't want to believe it. But that's nothing but our desire. I don't want to believe it, I want it to be impossible, but if it's the truth, then we have to accept it. Alright, time to make some arguments, I guess. Uh, locker pocketbook, maybe. Two years worth of memories. I could never lose something like that! We've been living here for two years? Hell no! That's impossible! I mean, I haven't gone to any awesome school events or anything! Heck, I've never even gone to a single class! No, gotcha, ass! Hmm. Kuro, there's something I'd like you to take a look at. This notebook right here. Huh? Hey! Why is my name written on it? I found it in the locker room on the second floor, if you don't mind. Could you take a look inside? Sure, whatever you want. But I've never seen this notebook before in my life. What's up, what's up? Is something wrong? It's kind of similar. No, even more than that. Uh, this is absolutely my handwriting without a doubt. But how is this? I don't remember ever writing in this thing. No, 
No way! It looks like you actually did attend class here at Hope's Peak, but somehow, you forgot all about it. Lies! It's all one big lie! I don't want to believe it either. But there's also no explanation for this pocketbook. <clears throat> and whose pocketbook is that? It's mine. And the handwriting inside is also mine. There's no doubt about it. But just like Hero, I have no memory of ever writing in it. And the reason for that is the two years of missing memories? <laughs> After seeing all the evidence, do you have any choice but to acknowledge the truth? Isn't it just so desperately dark? The mystery's solved, but it's like a goddamn funeral in here! Shit, man! I've never been to a funeral! Hell yes! Two years of school life. How many moments of blossoming youth have you missed out on? How many fun classes? How many school events? This was your chance to build lasting friendships, right? And on top of that, something tragically sad happened one year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Right before everyone's eyes, the world came crashing down. You absorbed all that despair, but then you forgot it all. And once you'd forgotten, you made the choice to subject yourselves to this killing game. Oh, and there's one other thing. To be even more precise, the memories you all lost? Actually, never mind. I'm bored. Explaining stuff is boring. What? We are bored of this world. Everyone always talks big, declaring all the great things they'll do. But then they always fizzle out. This world is just so desperately fucking boring! What are you talking about? In a way, I'm jealous of all of you. To give yourself over so completely to such stimulating despair? Yeah, so figure out the rest for yourselves! I'm sick of expositioning all this shit! Figure out what? Figure out where your memories come apart. That's at the heart of all of this. Our memories come apart. Just about the moment we must lost our memories. I only think of one time. Just after I set foot in the hall the first time was at the entrance ceremony. I got it! The moment I lost my memories. Mm. When I first came to the gates of this school and stepped foot in the main hall, when I passed out, I was overcome with a strange sensation. Wow! You still have enough spirit to keep on talking, huh? Um, so I don't know much about the details, but it seems like everyone remembers passing out, right? And your sense of time got all messed because of the memory loss after that? I guess it must have been something like that. After I passed out, I woke up in a classroom with my head on a desk. I assumed not much time had passed since I'd collapsed in the main hall. <laughs> but instead, two whole years had gone by. The reason it felt so short was because our memories of the time in between had been completely removed? You got it, honey. Two years of memories? Poof! Gone! Which means, of course... Damn. When everyone met for the first time, it wasn't actually for the first time. And that's the pictures I found her about. Unaware of this fact, you took the time to introduce yourselves to each other, but... But by that point, we'd already spent two years together at the school. That's what those photos reveal, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's what they reveal. You were all such close friends. You spent two years together, and then you started killing each other. And it was all so you could escape into a world that's already been annihilated. <laughs> what a terribly tragic tale. Even if you left now, there's nothing you could do to fix it. You're the one who set things up to be like this. I love you all so much. <laughs> what? Oh, Once your me. school life here began, I thought about you constantly. It's only natural that I would fall in love. So, since I love you guys so much, I'll tell you all about it. All about the idea we came up with as the ultimate Despair! Our plan to bring despair to all mankind! Oh no, are we all part of the despair group? Oh Jesus Let's Christ. Let's go back in time, two years, okay? Back to when everyone first came to this school. 
School life during that first year overflowed with hope and happiness. Oh boy, it was just the worst. Everyone was enjoying themselves so much. You were all having the time of your lives. But that couldn't last forever, of course. The peacefulness only made it through that first year. Because after that, an event unfolded that hammered a soul-crushing despair into all of humanity. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. It's never going to tell us the what it tragedy. is. The tragedy. All too soon, the world's days of peace came to a bloody end. And as you can imagine, the school was no exception. The tragedy even made its way here leading to the extermination of most of the students. That's the room with all the blood in it. What are you? Hmm? What do you mean? The most tragic event in human history. And the ultimate despair that caused it. I can't believe it's all because of just you and Mukuro. Was it some kind of organization? An angry mob? An incredibly motivated family? You have a point. If I had to describe it, I'd say it was none of those. How can I put it? It was more of an ideological thing. Despair is contagious, you know? It's almost like a natural phenomenon. Everyone is capable of it. And now the entire world has fallen into despair. In other words, if you see despair as the enemy, then your enemy is the world itself. I just don't understand why. We didn't ask you to try to understand. This was a tangent anyway, unrelated to the matter at hand. Okay, so let's get back to the story. Hope's Peak had taken so much damage. You guys were the only survivors. The members of the 78th class of Hope's Peak Academy were the only ones left. And then something super neat happened. Now pay attention, because this is important, and I'm only going to say it once. So guess what? To protect everyone who had survived, Hope's Peak was transformed into a shelter! That's right! It was transformed into a shelter! Ah, I said it twice! Now, someone was responsible for that transformation, for creating what would eventually become your prison. Do any of you know who that might have been? The shelter should have been the headmaster. I got it! It could only have been... The headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. He wanted to turn the school into a shelter to try and protect us. To protect us from the despair and tragedy taking place outside. That's why he asked us to make that promise. To say that we were willing to live in this school forever. We believe he had something like that in mind, yes. If you, the collective hope of a new generation, could survive, maybe the world could have a fresh start. Yeah, the headmaster put that much faith in you. And because we had that same hope, that's why we all agree to live here forever. But creating the shelter was also his single biggest mistake. laughable really he was the headmaster but he had no idea he had no idea that we the ultimate despair had already made our way into the school so what was supposed to be a shelter to keep you safe became a cage that made it impossible for you to escape despair <laughs> I have to say, it really helped me out a lot. It saved me a ton of time. By the way, it was you yourselves who blocked off the windows, the doors, all the exits. Under the headmaster's direction, you all went about your work like obedient little sheep. You mean we trapped ourselves in here? And then you forgot all about it and started bitching about how you were trapped in here. Once you would finished building your little shelter, it was time for me and Mukuro to get to work. And thus began the killing game. Me and Mukuro have come here 
spending the last two years waiting for that moment. That moment where you all began killing each other served as the climax of our global despair plan. And the only reason you survived the tragedy was so that you could be a part of it. Only let us live so we could go around killing each other? Is that what you're saying? Why? Why would you do that? Because this was so much more than a simple high school death match. Rather, it was a method to hunt down and destroy every last remaining speck of hope in the world. What are you saying? Well, it would seem that there's a little bit left out there. A few souls unwilling to give up hope. So I thought I should show them, which is why I... <laughs> well, why don't you tell me? Hey man's gambit. What? Hijack? Now I understand. You're talking about you hijacking the airwaves, aren't you? Uh-huh. That's exactly what I'm talking about to show the world the murders taking place at this school, which was meant to be a symbol of hope. That was the whole point of the ultimate despair. When I said climax, that was what I was talking about. The world watched as you fell into despair and began to kill each other one after another. Despair is as contagious as any disease. Any... Oops. <laughs> Isn't the power of television just amazing? By the way, since we started broadcasting, a whole bunch of people have tried to come and rescue you. Uh, are you serious? But utilizing the heavy weaponry I installed around the school grounds, I had no problem expelling them. Expelled them? I have to thank you all. They were a relentless bunch, refusing to give up on hope and trying to force their beliefs on the world. But in the end, I was able to give them the final despair. Death. So you just used us to bring despair to everyone in the outside world? Well, sure, but I also gave you a second chance at life, right? So it's like, give and take. Give and take? You're so full of shit! And there's Ooh, a got reason her. I chose you guys to survive when all the other students were dropping like flies. I mean, we built up two years of memories together. You were all my treasured classmates. Sorry, that's a lie. I just figured you'd despair even more when you found out a friend had betrayed you. And that's the truth, which is what you wanted, right? So, does it make you feel utterly lost and hopeless? You solved the mystery, but despair at the truth, right? Don't tell me. Did you seriously count on the possibility that we would solve your mystery? And if we did? Then what? Our final desire for creating this world of despair was so we could experience one last class trial. If you were bold enough to solve the mystery, only to discover that the truth was utterly hopeless, how would you react? What would you do? See? Discovering the truth doesn't necessarily lead to a sense of hope. Truth can be full of despair, too! Like right fucking now! Truthful despair, that's... Not to mention, all those motives I talked about were totally meaningless. I mean, with the world having ended and all. Meaningless? Then we... We've been murdering each other? For nothing? And think about it. You chose to lock yourselves up here, then started murdering each other to get out. We weren't just random strangers, either. We were classmates. We'd spent two years together. Even I can't laugh at that. <laughs> we get it. We get it, okay? You're totally awesome, right? We get it already. So help us. I'll do anything. Just help me. A peasant begging for his life? Oh, how delightful. We've never witnessed such a travesty firsthand. But I'm sorry to say, begging doesn't work on me. All I want is despair, and there's no reason for it. And since there's no reason, there's no argument against it. There's just no understanding it. No argument, no understanding. What better definition of ultimate despair 
could there be? Wait, hold on. You've just been going on about whatever you feel like, but but there's no real reason for us to believe anything you have to say. Huh? You say the world's fallen apart, but I haven't seen it for myself, so I don't acknowledge it. I don't accept it as the truth! Until you see it with your own eyes, truth and falsehood overlap one another. In other words, you're not unlike Schrodinger's cat right now. Is that what you're saying? If so, what then? Are you saying you won't accept the truth until you can go outside and see for yourself? Well, you better not! You go out into that world and you're all gunners for sure! Trust me, I'm not lying about any of this! Well, even if it's all true, I refuse to give in! I refuse to lose to you! For the sake of everyone you've killed! Huh? Everyone I've killed? What are you talking about? You're the ones who killed them! I didn't kill anyone. I simply gave you a little nudge in the right direction. And that's all it took for you to start killing each other. You're nothing but bloodthirsty animals. That's why anyone was murdered here, peasant! Say what you want about hope, but we're all creatures of instinct, right? Despair comes naturally! Oh yes! <laughs> that's funny as shit! No! This isn't just some game to us, it's murder! Plain and simple, you stole our memories, invented reasons for us to do it! You pushed us all into a corner! It's all your fault! You certainly have a talent for passing the buck, don't you? That must be your hope, huh? But we don't have much time left to keep up this banter. We have to draw things to a close soon. What do you mean? I'm talking about the vote, of course! You didn't forget about that little rule, did you? Oh, and also, since this will be the last vote, I decided to change the rules! What? You guys so full of hope, and me so full of despair. I've decided to have you vote which one will be punished. If even one of you votes to punish hope, well then, I'll consider that a win for me and punish everyone on the side of hope. Even if it's just one person? Oh, but don't worry. I won't be voting, of course. Even if you don't, you've still got the upper hand in all this. It's okay. Nobody would actually vote to kill themselves, right? Oh, let me just mention one more thing. When I win to punish you guys, you'll have to stay here till you grow old and die. No fighting, no killing. That's your punishment. You mean, we just... We'd have to just live here? She's saying she'll let us live! If you're not happy with that, then go ahead and punish me. And make your way to the outside world. Enter a world fallen from grace, where only despair exists. Where you'd likely be dead within a day. What are you saying? So no matter what, we're doomed! Wait a sec! I just got hit with an inspiration bomb! Dying of old age is boring as shit, right? The audience at home isn't gonna dig that at all! So, here's what'll happen. One of you will get to experience an instant, super impressive punishment! What? You... you can't just... Do you mean to say... you'll execute one of us? And I get to decide... who's gonna have to suck it down! Makoto, you're up! Me? Yeah. You've been acting up, causing all kinds of trouble. I hate you! So let me make this clear. Everyone has two choices in front of them. If a single person votes for hope to be punished, then only Makoto will receive a harsh punishment, and the rest of you will live here in peace. If, on the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. I will force you out. Ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. What I'm saying is, if you sacrifice Makoto, the rest of you will get to live out your lives. What? Has your resolve softened? Have you lost confidence? Are you afraid of being punished? Don't you have faith in your friends? No, that's not it. It's okay. You're right to be afraid. It would seem all of those around you have realized the futility of going against me. Guys, it's so beautiful. Your lovely faces, eroded by despair, have come together as one. Besides, 
Yoko, you could never betray your father, could you? What? I mean, the headmaster's only wish was that all of you would survive, right? That's why he tried to trap you all here, after all. The least you can do is try to honor your dead father's wishes. <laughs> Kyoko, one person's despair is enough to seal your fate. Isn't that just the most hopeless outcome ever? So, who do you think's gonna give in? Whose despair is gonna sign your death warrant? No one. Nobody's gonna give in to despair! We're not gonna lose to you! So boring. Stubborn till the very end, huh? Well, that's fine. Then let's just hurry up and get it over with. It's time for the final vote. Everything will come to an end. Your stupid hope. And your stupid life! The final vote. This is it. The ultimate confrontation! I have to show everyone. I have to make them remember. I have to convince them not to give up. To live in despair. That's not really living at all. Group photo, I guess. We won't give up. As long as there's hope, we'll never give up. If I were to die, that would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. <laughs> the way. The air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here is thanks to the air purifiers in the physic- If I die, the purifiers will screech to a halt. In other words, as soon as I die, the communal life you've all been living will come to an end. Meh. Meh. All of you will have to leave. You'll have to go into the world outside, where only death and despair are waiting. So, what are you gonna do? Will you just die? Is that what you want? Hmm. There's no hope left in the world and you sleep. <laughs> the bed of despair. The world is in despair. You're in despair. There's something everyone's gonna be consumed by despair. I don't know to plant the seeds or anyone else. We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! Give me that if hope. If I were to die, that would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. <laughs> Don't lose hope now! All my fortune-telling senses are telling me not to leave this place. <laughs> but to live means moving forward, right? So even if it's hard, and even if we're scared, we don't have any choice, do we? I want to keep on living. I want to open the next door. There must be something new waiting for me. So that's why. That's why, no matter what, I need to get out of here. The whole fortune telling thing doesn't matter anymore. What matters is my own gut feelings. We won't give up. You gotta have hope. Don't lose hope now. I've been thinking about all this, and I was thinking, at a time like this, what would Sakura do? You only get stronger by taking adversity by the horns. Confront that thorny path with enthusiasm. That sounds like something she'd say, right? No. I think that's definitely what she'd say, which is why I... Yeah! I've made up my mind! Meh. Don't lose hope now! Don't lose hope! <laughs> she doesn't care. I don't care either way. I'm fine with whichever one is more interesting. Actually, I may not look like it, but I always hated school. Oh, no matter how I look, still hate it. <laughs> oh, but no matter what, Master has to come along with us. Those hope. hope now. Ugh. What's the matter? You're not actually trying to encourage me, are you? <laughs> Ridiculous. It never even crossed my mind that I might give in to despair. But don't misunderstand me. I couldn't care in the slightest what happens to you. I just have to keep my word. I swore I would end the life of the Mastermind. Besides, the Togami family isn't dead, because I'm still alive. So until I can restore the Togami family and bring it greater glory than it's ever known, 
We won't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope now. I forgot about you. <laughs> I forgot all about you. <laughs> I didn't really know my father, so I can't pretend to know what he was thinking. But even if we're just connected by blood, there's one thing I am sure of. He would never want us to abandon Makoto and choose to stay here. I can't explain why exactly. But if I'm sure of anything, I'm sure of that. Just because we don't actually know anything, does that mean we can't understand? Could it be that... No, never mind. So, Makoto, I don't think you wound up at this school because you had good luck or bad luck. I think you came here for a different reason entirely. You came here to bring down the ultimate despair. You came here to confront despair without ever giving up. I'm the ultimate hope! Oh, if that's true, I <laughs> think the ultimate hope. What do you think? Yeah. What the... What the hell are you? Yeah. Nice! Ultimate hopes of add the truth section of my handbook. Time to play another dance game, I guess. So uncool. <laughs> oh, whatever, I'm faces, the coolest. The stupid things you've said! The stupid way you all treat each other! It's all so uncool! So unhip! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Lame, 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 lame! I can't kind of lead anything. I hope it's a talent you develop, but still. But still. The moment of truth. All right, let's do it. You suck from despair. Woo! Despair the ultimate into hope, motherfucker! Despair into your hope keeps on going. <laughs> Break. I refuse to give up. I refuse to get bored. I refuse to throw it all away. I refuse to despair. Because uh -huh. all I have going for me is the desire to keep moving forward. What's going on? What's happening? Oh, yeah. Man, that was a really long trial. <laughs> Results. Hey, hooray. Yay, coins. <laughs> it looks like we've reached the end. I think it may be time to vote. We just gotta pull the lever, right? Good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's put an end to these trials. Put an end to the killing with our own hands. Who's found guilty? Oh, yay! The ultimate despair. I wonder what's going to happen to her. Oh, she's... The hell? <laughs> Indeed. You've lost, Junko. I lost? Lost me? No oh, way! That's just... It can't be! Uh, um... You still don't accept it? Even the ultimate despair itself is vulnerable to the onslaught of despair, it would seem. What the heck? There's no use in trying to fight it now. Oh, that's just... <laughs> huh? So this is despair. This, this is despair. We came to this school two years ago, created our incredibly detailed plan, even killed my own sister for it. And now I... To come this far and fail at the very end. Oh, despair. It's the most ultimately ultimate despair. I knew she'd like it. What are you talking and about? Now I... No, you see? I was so hopelessly desperate. I was bored of the world the moment I was born. That's why I've been looking forward to this, this so desperately, this once-in-a-lifetime experience. It is my first and last colossal despair here at the moment of death. I have a chance to taste of the highest grade despair, the utter failure of my dreams. Oh, despair! Uh, I'm so hopelessly happy right now. Huh? Well, is she enjoying this? Anyway. So you admit defeat. <laughs> You think I care whether I won or lost? Either way, it doesn't change a thing. Outside is only despair. Inside is only despair. No matter where you go, despair awaits you. That's not true. Not possible. You're wrong. Huh? Don't make me repeat myself. Let me tell you this right now. We no longer fear despair. Okay. 
because we decide to entrust our outside world with hope into the outside world with hope. <laughs> yeah, Makoto totally seduced us over to his side. <laughs> Everywhere. How did the freaking serial killer make it to the end? Hey. Oh, he said that despair is contagious as any disease. However. But the same is true for hope. All you have to do is look at us to see how true that is, Kyoko. Ugh. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, stop. I hate those faces you're making. See those awful looking, see those awful looks cause me nothing but pain. There's one last thing. Fine, let me just say one last thing. If you guys want to get all hung up on the word hope, that's no skin off my nose. Just be warned, from this point on, one despair after another will stand in your way. <laughs> No matter where you run, no matter where you hide, maybe you'll find some hopes, but there's a very fine line dividing that hope from bitter despair. <laughs> Knowing that, he still planned to cling to hope. Of course, because it's we... Fine, fine. Shut up, shut up! That was a rhetorical question, and you interrupted my monologue. I'm almost done, though, so whatever. <laughs> because it's also ultimate punishment time, right? It can't be. You really intend to go through this? <laughs> that was the agreement, right? Hold on, it's not like I want you to die. You don't have to- Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! What? How many times do I have to tell you? Active living brings me no hope at all. <laughs> all I want to do now is taste the despair of death that you only get once in a life, so- Don't get in my way! Okay. <laughs> so this is how the despair of death feels. <sighs> It's so wonderful! Even a tenth of this despair. Even a hundredth. I want every last soul on this planet to taste such despair. I want the entire world to die with that despair in its mouth. Okay, let's do this. She is nuts. But we already knew that. <laughs> I deserved an extra special punishment for last. Let's give it everything we've got. <laughs> it's Punishment time! Her face and her mic was clipping when they recorded that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Congratulations, Juku has been found guilty. Time for the punishment! No, she walks in willingly. They didn't have to drag her away. <sighs> okay. Yep. All the ones at the same time. Yep. The ultimate punishment. The ten one thousand blows. The cage of death. The burning of Rasali's witch. Excavator destroyer. Blast off. After school lesson. Ah. There we go. That got her. <laughs> Dang. Wrecked! Emergency override. <laughs> wow. And she didn't make it through that one. And that's how everything came to an end. The final class trial. Junko Inoshima, the ultimate despair. Life at Hope's Peak Academy. It was all over. Ultimate pain, ultimate suffering, ultimate despair, ultimate execution, ultimate death. The end. Monokuma hair tie present. Save the data. I guess so. But even after saying it was all over, it was not like the building exploded or collapsed on itself or anything. It wasn't the kind of ending... What? That wasn't the kind of ending waiting for us. Nothing changed. Well, with one exception. The air purifiers turned off. 
just like Junko said, they shut off immediately. That was the only difference. Goodbye, Despair High School. Epilogue. We left the courtroom and made our way to the main hall. We stood in front of the door. Nobody made a sound. I felt almost absent-minded. This is our epilogue before the final ending. We were stuck here in limbo, unmoving, unsure. But, in the end... Hey. We can't just stand around like this, <clears throat> around like this forever. At some point, we need to leave. Nobody's surprised it was Kyoko who broke the silence. Would you do the honor? Okay. As if awakened by, the, by Kyoko's words, I took the object we'd gotten. Up until the moment of her death, it belonged to Junko. In the end, she dropped it before us. So, um... But is that really it? Is that really the key to the door? Indeed. You don't have to read into it what she said too much to find the answer. If, on the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. I will force you out, ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. In other words... We'll force you out, she said, just before dropping that. Makes sense that it would be our way out of here. But... Maybe it's actually a switch that's gonna make the school self-destruct. I mean, Junko never said specifically that she'd let us leave here alive. It's true. You may be right about that. <laughs> Maybe! Yes. But even so, it's impossible to think we wouldn't take our chances with it. Uh, um... Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. My beautiful scissors! If something ever happened to Master, I'd take my scissors and jam so far up. Uh huh? Hey, where's the courtroom? Where's the mastermind? It's all over. We're just about to leave the school. Leave? We can go outside? It means me and Master can get married? And then he'll give me a little jewel of a baby? That's enough. Please stop. That would be a greater horror than anything I've encountered so far. Anyway. Don't worry, there's no doubt that we'll be able to leave here without a problem. But... What happens after we get out of, uh, after we get out of here that I'm worried about? <sighs> but you know, in the end, I, I think part of me still thinks You're serious. Maybe we get out of there. Maybe when we get out of there, get out of here. Whatever. We'll see that everything she said about the world is a lie. Then on the other side of the door is a world as peaceful, peaceful as we remember. A lie, peaceful as we remember. Well, no matter what, it looks like is still our world. It's where we're meant to live. Uh, um. Yeah, I guess so. And how do I put it like this? Unlike this school, the world is really big, right? Since it's so big, I'm sure there must be some despair no matter what. There also has to be lots of hope, right? In other words... The act of searching for hope to try to find... It's one of those anime endings where they have to be like super philosophical and crap at the end. As long as you have that hope, you can keep moving forward no matter what trouble you may fall Am into. Am I wrong? Is that what you mean, Makoto? Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Hmm. I don't need any of you to spell that out for me. You know, Junko mentioned that there were still others out there who hadn't cast away hope just yet. <laughs> Maybe I should find them and make them work for me. To rebuild the world, we must first rebuild the Togami Dynasty. <laughs> go with you, I'll follow you anywhere you want to go. You got it. Well, my first stop is going to be the closest donut shop. I can figure out the rest from there. Hey. And what are you going to do if there are no more donut shops or donuts? Okay. I'll just get some flour and make them myself, and if there's no flour, I'll just grow some wheat. Uh, I get it now. Hmm. If there's no road, you just gotta build one. Creation. Fate is telling me to remake the world. Could it be? That's my hope. How about that? I've reached the next stage, the next chapter of Yoshihiro Agubaga. Life story's about to begin. Whoa! Thanks, Hina. You totally opened my eyes. Oh. Hey, personal space buddy, you're seriously creeping me out. Makoto. Come on, Makoto. Oh, everyone's matched up. We can recreate the world with our loves. Hero got donuts, and I get a uh, burnt hands, girl. Ugh. Those handies are gonna be gross. Even if everyone in the outside world is gone, even if the world is steeped in despair, <laughs> as long as I have people like you around, I can face forward and keep moving. If we can get out of, get out there and do something, have some sort of impact. But what can we do? There's so few of us, and we're so small. What can we do? No. We can probably do anything. Yeah, we can do anything. Well, I guess this is goodbye. And goodbye 
to Sakura. But hey, if we gotta say goodbye, we may as well do it with a smile on our face. Hey guys, you guys want your fortunes told anywhere, anytime. You just let me know. I'll be there. You know how much I hate being annoyed. But if something does come up, you may as well let me know. I can't guarantee I'll actually bother listening, but, you know. I don't know why, but I have a burning desire to start writing. I might be able to pull it off. A story about Master and me, and the others, I guess. I can't say I'm sorry about what happened, but still, it does feel kind of strange. I really don't know what to say. I guess we graduated? Ha! <laughs> Yeah, we graduated. Button. Looks like hope is really spreading. Look how happy he is. Look at him. Look at him. As long as I never give up, I have to push even harder. I'm gonna keep moving forward with hope in my heart. Since I have hope, I can show courage. Since I have hope, I can move ahead. The world can move ahead. The door began to open. With my hands, with our hands, hope and despair mingled together, opening the door to the future. I bet it's not going to show. Heck was that? Of course, it's not going to show. Dun, 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 dun. Cast! Oh, we did it! Makoto Nagi! Huh. Huh. Yeah! Beat the game! Oh! Ooh. Stretchy, 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 stretchy! Whoo! Man! Oh! Oh, we did it! Oh, we did it! Oh my god! Well, I was right about a lot of things. We was right about a lot. And the whole, maybe we went, we're in the future. Well, two years in the future, so I wasn't completely off by that. Oh, boy. I'm exhausted. That took a lot longer than I thought it was. I'm like, oh, we'll beat it and I'll start early so I can go eat with my friends, but... <laughs> I'm sure I, it's probably too freaking late for that now. Oh well. Ah, uh, we did it. And there's a second one of these. There's a second game coming out. And we'll have to give that one a play. I, I mean, I half expect that that some like freaking Makoto's the mastermind behind the second one. But who knows? You know, <laughs> just just guessing. Maybe he lost all his hope and it turned into despair. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I've enjoyed playing it. Leave a like if you liked it. You better leave a like if you've watched this far into it. <sighs> I'll see you guys next time. Mwah. Mwah. Today's your birthday. Happy birthday. If anything cool gets shown at the end of this, I'll show it. But until then, stay toasty, my friends. <sighs> ah. Here he is. <laughs> dot dot dot. Monokuma. Oh, who's gonna control Monokuma now? Dot dot dot. <laughs> God dang it! <laughs> Knew it! Interesting. Things are getting very interesting indeed. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma. And I am your. I am this school's headmaster. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Dang it, Monokuma! Ah. Hey, I got an Easter egg. The Easter egg present.